Hey kids, welcome to lesson 16, functions with return values. Using a function that returns a value in an app, part do. This time you're going to write a function that returns a value to add functionality to the turtle driver. The update turtle function now is making a call to a function called wrap. And this hasn't been written yet. It accepts three parameters and should work in the following way. Input, the input value to the function, if it is within the range, it should just be returned. The lower bound of the range, if input is below the value, the output should be the value of high. The upper bound of the range, if input is above this value, the output should be the value of low. By using this function, you can create the illusion that the screen wraps around. So when a turtle leaves the top of the screen, it appears again at the bottom. Hmm. Reminds me a lot of Pac-Man. You kids remember Pac-Man? <laughs> Do this. Starter code is provided, which allows the turtle to move. The update turtle function now makes two calls to wrap, but the function is not yet written. Write the wrap function so that it implements the logic described above. Run your app and confirm the turtle now wraps when it leaves the screen. Looks like we have an example down here. And it looks like our little turtle is moving to the screen. Oh, pops over to the other side. Up and pops down there. Hmm. Let's go ahead and take a look at our code here. We have a pen up feature. We have an X and Y location, that's the middle of the screen. On the event screen one, a key down is pressed. If it is the left key, you're gonna go negative 10 pixels. If it's the right key, positive 10, up, negative 10, down, positive 10. Then we update the turtle. Function update turtle, this is what we wrote last lesson. This just says your X location goes from zero to 320, and your Y location goes from zero to 450. Then move to the X and Y location. We have function wrap, input low and high, variable output. Looks like we have a place for our code, and then return output. Kids, this may seem very daunting, but we've actually already done this lesson in the previous exercises. Really what we need to do is we need to limit it so that if it goes outside high, we're just going to, instead switching it to whatever high is, we're gonna switch it to the lowest number. So we're essentially just gonna flip flop. If we get to our high end of the extreme, we're gonna reset to low, which should give the appearance that it goes around the screen. How do we do that? Well, last time we used an if, else, if, else statement, and I think I'm gonna write exactly what I did before. How are we gonna write this? Well, we want it so whenever it gets to the lowest spot, we want it to go to the top spot. We're essentially doing in reverse what we did before. How does that look? Well, if my input is less than my lowest number, I want it to return or go to the high. All that's saying is, if your input here is lower, it's like negative whatever, we just want our output to go to the highest number, which should be 450. So if I'm back here behind zero, I want it to just come up over here. So essentially, if it goes to the lowest spot, spot keep going up our negative numbers, we want it to wrap around to our highest spot. And that's just saying if the input is less than low, if it's somewhere up here, we want you to go to the high limit of our constraints. That's the high end. How about the low end? Else if, well, else if the input is greater than the high number, we want the output to be low. That means if it gets to the, if the input is greater than a higher down here, we should set or reset to our lower spot down here. 
That, if you remember, takes care of the two. What happens if the numbers are equal, though? Well, in that case, we just want to use another else statement, a little curly Q, if output equals input, and then we're going to return output, which is our variable right there. And our output variable is just being substituted with either low, high, or whatever the input is. It's either going to be out of bounds too high, out of bounds too low, or it's going to be in the middle of the range. I think this program is going to work. Let's test it out though. Run, here's my turtle, let's go up. There it goes, appears at the bottom of the screen. Look how fun that is, kids. Let's try it in the X direction. Same thing, trying on our high numbers. Looks like it works both ways. It really looks like it is just going around or wrapping around the screen. Very, very neat. I think our code is working the way it should. Looking back to our do this, we went through the starter code provided to understand it. We updated the turtle function to make a wrap. We did this by using the knowledge we built in this lesson and using our constraints. We wrote the wrap function that implements the logic above here and ran our program to confirm it actually wrapped the screen. I think that's all we had to do for this lesson. Let's see if code.org wants anything else. Nope. Good job, kids. This was a tough lesson, but you did a phenomenal job. And I will see you all on lesson 17, which is our final lesson before the AP test. Can you believe it? I'll see you there, kids.